I thought in this section here, I would talk a little bit about the phone. Um, almost everybody on the trail, everybody I saw, you were using their phone for navigation, communication, things like that. Uh, I did see some people who initially had printed out the paper maps, but then those were usually left behind or used to start fires. So the phone was really an important part uh, of navigating the trail. So I want to talk about some of the main tools that I found helpful uh, when I was on Te Aradoa. Uh, for navigation, first of all, Far Out and the TA app were the two main apps that people were using. Uh, Far Out is fantastic for the community notes, the kind of updated notes about what's going on, if there's water ahead, you know, th these type of things. But also it's customizable. So like what I did is I watched previous year uh, TAs on YouTube and made notes on that for myself. Uh, the TA app, that's where you had uh, the official TA notes for each section would tell you what was going to be happening, what was going to be going, what the turns you needed to make. And also now this year they've listed every single hut in New Zealand, let alone along the, uh, the trail. So that's a pretty powerful, both those apps are pretty powerful, pretty necessary for navigating. When it came to uh, weather, uh, as I mentioned the Q&A videos, the Garmin Mini that I carried was by far the best, most accurate way of getting weather. Even when there was no uh, cell service, I could connect to the satellite system and get up-to-date weather apps. It was almost always spot on. But when we did have cell service, um, the two apps that I found the most helpful were Niwa, uh, just for you know, the details of uh, weather forecasting it had coupled with Met Service. So those are the two um, weather apps that I saw a lot of people using and I found that those are most helpful. Uh, for communicating back and forth with each other, almost everybody on the trail used WhatsApp. Um, again, you can set that up in groups and get a lot of information, sometimes a little bit of information overload. You had to be careful of fear mongering going on. But it was good to be able to be connected with people to find out where they were, how far ahead, how far behind. Uh, so WhatsApp is a really good uh, app to be able to, to get and use on the trail. And then uh, Facebook has kind of been around for a while, but there were three uh, groups that I joined that were really helpful. Uh, first of all, it was the 2324 uh, um Te Aradoa group and so every year I already saw there's a 2425 Facebook group that's been started so if you're going to do this next year it'd be good to get on that a lot of information gets thrown out there uh, there's a general Te Aradoa Facebook group and then the Te Aradoa Trail Angels Facebook group is a really good group to be a part of if you're needing some place to to stay that's where you're going to find a lot of information again just be careful of the fear mongering that goes uh, on these. A lot of people kind of overreact um, to situations that are happening. So you just got to kind of look at things for yourself and make those judgment calls for yourself. But uh, these were certainly the, the most helpful tools that I found using my phone on Te Aradoa. Okay, now let me show you the stuff that I added in on, uh, with these items and then we're going to do some weighing. First of all, these things are things that even after my gear video, I added them before I started the TA. Um, these are just um, the straps that hold your quilt onto your sleeping pad. Really helpful to have that way you can rotate around in the sleeping pad and, and the quilt's not flying off the side. I added some bigger rubber bands, smaller rubber bands and some carabiners and shoelaces. Um, and, and the shoelace actually came in handy that one night with a really heavy windstorm, that just kind of gave me another tie out place. But uh, yeah, just extra stuff that I carried. Um, brought some spare pens when the one pen that I had stopped working and I had to use a pencil. I hate using pencils. So I brought some spare pens and then never needed it again. There's a little thing I picked up in um, Auckland. So what it could do is it could 
I put this in the bottom of my phone and I could charge it up and also use my headphones uh, with the iPhone 12. If you use a, a you know, cable with your headphones, that's what you need. And it worked out really well. About the last three weeks, it stopped working. Um, I mean, I paid like six bucks for it, so it's not that big of a deal. But that was a nice little gizmo to have. Um, these, I picked these up after I poked my eye in Deception Valley. And it was I was just having a hard time reading my phone and seeing the phone when I was doing the editing. So I ended up having to get some reading glasses. Didn't want to have to do that, but uh, yeah, that's just part of getting older, I guess. This was given to me and, and Barb and, and I, we both got one of these from a fellow that we were at a backpacker somewhere and he had just come from Antarctica and he gave us these. And so I carried around, I have a friend who actually wants to go to Antarctica someday, so I thought she might want that. Um, so, you know, just a nice little thing, didn't weigh anything. Um, but uh, yeah, so I carried that for about a month. This was probably the biggest item, the most expensive item of all this stuff. When I realized that my water filter, I just didn't trust it anymore. I uh, was looking to get actually a Sawyer Squeeze and couldn't find those anywhere in Wanaka where I was, which I was really surprised. But I did get this Life Straw Mac Pack. Uh, it's just a 600 millimeter bag with a filter on the inside. Um, I, and it came with this, this guy. On, on my first video, the first gear video, I had a syringe listed and I ended up not taking it because I just used the bottles. I just used the bottles to, to clear out the, um, the filters. This one, I haven't really checked to see if that would work the same thing, but what I like about this is it was super fast, really, really fast. And I could just fill this up and just drink right from the river from this. What I didn't like about this is there's no way to hang it up. And so you had to sit there and hand filter all your water. But because it was so fast, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. But it's really nice to have. Um, I think I'm gonna go back to the, the other kind of water filter though. I just like that a little bit more um, than this, but this was really nice to get. Um, <laughs> I picked this up. I think about the same place I picked these up. Uh, this is when my shoes, the bottom started falling apart. And it's, it's pretty heavy, but I'm glad I, I got this because I had to repair those shoes a couple of times. I picked this up at the same time, uh, thinking I was about running out of gas and I never even opened that thing. So thank you, Richard, for bringing that back to me. And then <laughs> right at the very end, um, my wife asked me to pick up some rocks and pine cones and stuff. She's gonna work on making a collage kind of represent the, the TA. So this is kind of some of the stuff that I picked up along the way. So that's, um, that's the stuff that I added along the way. And now I'm gonna take everything that I added and weigh that up. And I bet it's gonna be probably at least a kilo, if not more. Okay, so in this bag are all the clothing items that I added in and all those little items that I just talked about. And that is a total of 1.43. I did weigh the bag is 0.55, so all of this was 0.88, or I just rounded up to 0.9 of a kilo, so almost a kilo extra. And uh, it doesn't surprise me that it weighed that much, but it's one of those things you just gotta really be careful about the extra stuff that you add in. Okay, this final part of the video is the base weight that I had at the end of the TA. Um, here's what I had when I before I started here's the weight and now here's what it is now, now that's a pretty good chunk that's yeah about a kilo difference so um, certainly not ultralight that's for certain but uh, still manageable okay well that's the wrap up for my gear review video. If you have any questions about any of the gear that I had or why I made choices that I did make, uh, feel free to leave those in the comments and I will answer those as quickly as I can. All right, uh, so upcoming videos will be the review of the backpack. Um, probably eventually do one for the tent, but not anytime super soon. Um, I've got a view, video coming up about mainly about the expenses, but some other statistics that I had. 
and uh, I think maybe one or two other small videos about the TA. But uh, the next one coming up will be the backpack review.